Hi, I'm Paula Ward and this is Easy Knitting Design. I've created two videos about knitting a swatch and determining your gauge. A swatch is just a small sample of knitting that you work up to determine your gauge, which is the number of stitches per inch or the number of rows per inch for that yarn and that needle size. This is part one where I'll show you how to knit a circular gauge, which is knitting in the round. In part two, I'll go over knitting a flat gauge, which is knit back and forth, and I'll show you how to block your swatch. I demonstrate both types of swatches, flat and circular, because the sweater I demonstrate uses both kinds of knitting. We'll start with the yarn label. Here we see that the recommended gauge for this yarn is four and a half to five stitches per inch on size seven to eight needles. And these are only recommendations. Get as close as you can to the recommended gauge on whatever needle size it takes. Now it's important that you use the exact yarn and the exact same needles for the swatch that you plan to knit your sweater with. Knitting needles of different materials will produce very different gauges even though they're the same size. I'll be using a 32 inch circular needle and a method called magic loop. Cast on enough stitches to give you 8 to 10 inches around. For the gauge I want of about 5 stitches to the inch, that would be 40 to 50 stitches. Divide the stitches in half and pull the cable through at the halfway mark. Move half the stitches onto the left needle and slide the other half down the right needle onto the cable. Both the tail end and the ball ends of the yarn are on the right needle. Make sure your stitches aren't twisted. Now we'll do a circular join. Hold both ends of the yarn together and take a stitch, pulling lightly on the first stitch to close up any gaps. Drop the tail end of the yarn and continue knitting. When you come to the end of the first half of the stitches, slide the stitches you've just knit down the cable on the right needle. Slide the other half of the stitches onto the left needle and knit these stitches, pulling slightly on the first stitch again to avoid gaps. Keep working in this way. Slide the stitches you've just knit down the right cable and the stitches you are about to knit up onto the left needle. After knitting a couple of inches, stop and do a quick check of your stitch gauge. To check your gauge, place pins four inches apart on your knitting and count the stitches between the pins. Divide by four to get your stitches per inch. Place your first pin between the columns of V-shapes Every V-shape is a whole stitch. Your four inches may end on a whole stitch, a half a stitch, or even a quarter stitch, especially if you're using a bulky or chunky yarn. After you've knit at least six inches on your circular swatch, it's time to bind off. You bind off by knitting the first two stitches, slipping the right stitch over the left stitch, then knitting the next stitch, and slipping the right stitch over the left stitch again. Be sure and not bind off too tightly. Continue in this way, knitting and slipping, all the way around the swatch. Check your stitch gauge again. Check your row gauge as well. To count your rows, pick a consistent spot to mark the beginning of a row. Here I've chosen where the rounded shoulder of the stitch below meets the stitch above it. Count every V-shaped stitch as a row straight up the column. Here, my count ends on a whole row. A half a row would look like this. Make a note of your gauge. I like this chart that tracks all the important info, including the yarn and the needle size. In part two, we'll talk about knitting a flat swatch and blocking. 